All right, welcome to part two of Introduction to Ometer. This time we'll be covering the uh, Access Specifications tab in more depth. Last time we covered some basics like what the uh, workers are for and um, what uh, target you might select and why you might select it, some specific parameters, the sectors, the number of outstanding IOs. Uh, we're skipping network targets tab again. This time we'll save that one for a little bit more in-depth advanced lesson. This time um, we're going to get a little bit more into uh, access specifications and how you can configure them differently for your purposes. And I, I, I pre-configured a few of them here. We're going to configure a couple for the uh, purpose of this lesson. And then we're going to uh, fire some of them off just to kind of give you a feel for how they work differently. Um, of course, we uh, went over uh, the results tab last time, this uh, test setup tab. And uh, everything's pretty much the same as last time. There are no real differences. I just uh, bumped the uh, runtime to uh, 20 seconds to uh, expedite things a little bit. We don't really need to run the uh, full gamut of tests. But as a reminder, you do want to kind of err on a longer uh, runtime, probably a minimum of anywhere from like 45 seconds but preferably more like uh, five to ten minutes when you're doing some really involved testing just so that you can kind of flush out any kind of um, uh, bursts that your disks may uh, pump out because a lot of times they're configured to give you an initial speed burst using the advanced caching mechanisms and that's going to be kind of upfront in the process so the longer you run that disk out the more accurate and more stable your results are going to be so longer being better but for the purpose of this we don't really need to do that alright back to um, access specifications this time uh, we're going to create just kind of a series of I've just kind of come up with some kind of commonplace logical settings or everyone's you know um, gonna have their own opinion on on what you might come up with a specific scenario say for exchange 2003 and and uh, SQL Server Oracle OLTP database session, Oracle data warehousing session. Um, everybody's going to kind of have their own mindset on that, but I kind of tried to give it uh, kind of a close semblance of, of what one might think as an average, I guess. All right, we're going to go ahead and look through the exchange starting out and just uh, double click it to open it. And here you give your <clears throat> access specification a name. Uh, you just call it whatever you want. The fault assignment, you really don't need to mess with that. It kind of takes care of itself. Uh, again, you can set that for more advanced configurations for really full-blown testing, but uh, you really don't need to. Uh, you come down here, and this is really the main line you're concerned with. This is your block size right here. They broke it out between meg, uh, kilobytes, and bytes. Uh, just probably to make it a little easier to read. Your access specification uh, right here is essentially accessing that initial I.O. file that you created in lesson one. It's accessing the file from start to finish in this case since it's 100%. If you were to set it to 50%, it would only actually touch 50% of the blocks in that 10 gig file in our case. So it would only hit about 5 gig of that. I normally leave this to 100%. Uh, there's a more advanced configuration for this where you will actually need to adjust that to lower settings. Uh, the uh, read percent, it's a read versus write. In this scenario, uh, we have that set to 60% read and 40% write. Randomness, that is, as it sounds, the, uh, the amount of random versus sequential reading. So here we're going to see 80% of random hits versus 20% of sequential block access. And that is, of course, sequential is just one block behind another where disk defrag really shines, as in the case where you have a lot of sequential access, that defragging process will line those blocks up. And uh, if it's a sequential read process, that's where your disk really has a chance to, to pump some speed out. And of course, random being less preferential, but more along the lines of uh, typical applications these days. Not everything sequential. There are very specific cases where sequential reigns supreme, unfortunately. Uh, your delay and your burst, 
we don't really need to get into that for now. Uh, again, that's more advanced. Uh, alignment with sector and then um, reply. That's another thing we don't really need to get into. Although I will comment on the alignment, um, the IO alignment. This is particularly important in the case of older operating systems and when using um, a configuration like VMware and uh, your data store is located on a SAN. Why this is important is that with older disks and operating systems like Server 2000, Windows XP, and older operating systems, and more so along the Windows uh, family, you're going to see they they created uh, they started their sector boundaries, I believe, at at um, the 63rd sector, which is a little bit all off from the standard. Um, I, I could be wrong on that. I, I should have a reference, but I'll have to look that one up. Um, what you want to do for an older operating system in that case is basically you want to set this. Uh, what I use is I use one meg, and I just set everything to zero. So it's going to align from uh, starting on the first megabyte out because of the um, boot partition information in the uh, uh, different alignment. You don't want to have an offset when you're reading those sectors because essentially what could happen uh, you would go to read a single block and instead of lining up on that block you would line up across two blocks so your um, IO subsystem would have to read uh, block one and two when the um, software only requested a single block read so you can see where that would cause um, a pretty good performance hit and you don't want to run into that so bottom line older operating systems use a one megabyte starting point um, or you can play with that uh, if you're curious you don't feel like your results are showing what you should see uh, but with the newer operating system as in uh, Vista Windows 7 Server 2003 I think is safe to go ahead and leave at a line on sector boundaries I think you should be okay um, again with the VMware you want to be careful there's some testing procedures do a, a search on block alignment in VMware and you'll see just loads of articles on that and um, how to check to see that you're properly aligning so that can be a biggie depending on your specific configuration so watch out for that one okay moving along now so we're good here so this is our basic configuration we're going to uh, create our own now